What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new video where I'm going to tell you the number one character that is going to help you dominate from low rank to high rank in none other than Reaper. As Reaper is actually dominant in the meta right now, even played at GM rank, and it's always been a great pick at the low elo of play. So if you master this hero, you're going to be able to climb from the low rank to high rank with ease, and by the end of this guide, you'll have all the tools you need in order to climb. But speaking of climbing, the GameLeap.com website is the one-stop shop. Shop if you want to climb on any character, whether it's tank, support, or DPS, we have in depth VOD reviews, advanced tips and tricks, consistently added courses, and everything you need in order to climb. So, do yourself a favor if you want to climb this competitive season 24, go check it out in the links down below. And we can't wait to see you there. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, right off the bat, we're going to be breaking down Reaper's kit, give you tips and tricks on every single one of his abilities and different things you don't know. Then, we're going to talk about his general counters and how to play Reaper in the current meta. So, let's kick it off with his first ability his passive lifesteal at 30 percent now this has been changed all over the place but at 30 percent this means that you have some amount of sustain especially if you're doing giant chunks of damage to tanks but it's going to be pretty hard for you to tank consistent damage on the front line if enemies are focused firing you so while it does give you a little bit of leeway as far as how long you could stay into the fight it will be something that you need to get a feel for because understanding when you can do damage to survive like another hit from a Rhine, for example, as opposed to running away, can be the difference between getting the kill on that Rhine and wraithing out too early to where you don't get that kill and he gets healed up. Now, moving on to his primary weapon, his Hellfire Shotguns. Now, Hellfire Shotguns will do 140 damage if you hit every single bullet in the body. Now, if you do get a large amount of them into the head, you can even one-tap 250 HP heroes, but you need to hit hit them in the upper torso neck area that is going to be the way that you get the most amount of pellets on them and a decent amount of them in the head as well this also means that you can two tap almost every single tank if you try to connect with the majority of their head and hit all your bullets at the same time now when you're trying to go for these one taps or do the maximum amount of damage it's actually a lot easier to do that damage if you actually jump and aim slightly down as it's going to get more bullets into the head and it's going to make it a lot harder for you to miss so this is a really important thing to do up against tanks like monkey and Ryan. But it can also be useful up against DPS as well. But you got to be careful about jumping in some other instances. I'll talk about that later. Now, if you want to up your damage per second with the Hellfire Shotguns and you want to practice your mechanical skills, I would highly suggest close range flicking duels in Kovac Aim Trainer. That's going to help you the most. But realistically, Reaper isn't that mechanically demanding. So you don't even need to do this that much. And you're already going to be a top tier mechanical Reaper. Now, the next ability that we have to break down is Reaper's Wraith ability. Now, Wraith is going to give you a 50% movement buff. It's going to last for three seconds and typically this is just used as an escape you go in you try to do as much damage get as much value as possible and then you use it to escape and you rinse and repeat in kind of a similar way that like a doom fist would do that right they go in and they go out it's the same thing you're doing on reaper now that being said it is really strong as an offensive tool as well because it not only reloads you but it lets you cancel it whenever you want it also clears ailments like anti-nade and toxic mine from widowmaker now if you really want to tap into the power of rage you need to understand the mind games of this ability because of the movement speed plus the ability for you to cancel at any time you can really really mess with enemies and it can end up just dominating them if you mess with their mind or you play mind games with them for example you can go in on a target pretend to wraith away only to instantly whip back with that faster movement speed and then come out of wraith jump and one tap them out of nowhere because of reaper's burst damage and the unpredictability of wraith it makes it really easy to bait people out or punish people people who act up or don't respect you you can also pressure people to use their cc and then pre-bait it with wraith like shooting a mccree for example and then understanding that he's probably going to cc you and instantly wraithing because of latency in general after you come out of your wraith because of that speed you're going to be able to get off one free shot before any cc can catch you so essentially you could unwraith and insta shotgun someone with them having no time to react this means that you could close the gap on a mccree hypothetically hit him once with the shotgun to less than 50% HP and Wraith and regardless of if he uses flash or not he's in a no-win scenario unable to run away because you have faster movement speed nor stun you fast enough post Wraith to prevent you from finishing him off so it's like a no-win scenario for him and all you got to do is connect with one shot get him slightly weak and then you Wraith and you're either going to dodge his stun or even if he doesn't use his stun he just can't win that matchup anyway so it's basically a free kill on your part against an isolated McCree now the next ability we got to talk about is the shadow step with a 1.5 cast time, you're invulnerable while exiting, and it can go up to 35 damn meters. That's pretty far. 
Now, you can use this in the air to save you if you get booped off the map or something like that. But this is really only useful on certain maps. But on maps like Ilios in particular, you need to actually be actively thinking about it because there's a really large margin for error here. You basically have to do it instantaneously or else you're just going to fall off. Even if you cast it too late, because you still are falling while you cast it, you could still fall off and die. So basically, if you're ever near the edges of the map on some of those maps that you can get booped off on, you need to always be actively thinking about, hey, I'm I need to use this if I ever get pooped off and you need to basically activate it right away. Now, an underrated aspect of this ability is not wraithing aggressively towards enemies who can't burst you or CC you. If you're full HP, very few enemies can do anything about you if you wraith on top of them and they cannot one shot you and they can't CC you. Even a character that typically has a CC but already used it like McCree, you can legit wraith right on top of them or right behind them and they can't do anything about it. And if they don't have their roll or their CC, you're just going to feast on them. Another key aspect of this is you could generally teleport behind enemies that are retreating and you can get easy exit picks as they run to regroup they're running away from the choke point they're trying to regroup with their team you can teleport behind them and feast on easy weakened players like monkey zarya zen and these players simply cannot outburst you and especially if they're not paying attention you're gonna go from teleporting in to instantly doing damage to them and getting that life steal and probably you're gonna get a whole bunch of kills in the process and stagger them out while you're building free ult charge now, the most typical use of the teleport is you're going to typically be transversing back to the high ground after every single play because usually the high ground is like the best setup to use that natural falling motion. Freeze your one taps. Like we talked about before how during a jumping motion, it's a lot easier for you to get all the bullets in the head and make sure that you don't miss any. It's the same way when you're falling. That's why you really want to teleport back to the high ground, fall onto an enemy and try to get as much damage or even kill them with those one taps that are a lot easier to execute. And then you can rate the way and then teleport back to the high ground and then rinse and repeat this process over and over now moving on to the last ability that we got to cover is none other than reaper's ultimate death blossom now this is probably the biggest feast or famine ultimate in the entire game and what i mean by that is sometimes you're going to be getting a 6k with this ultimate and the other half or maybe even like the other 70 percent of the time you're going to be insta dying using this ultimate and you get no value right well, you see, Death Blossom does 170 damage per second on anyone in its range, which is a whole bunch of damage, and it can easily burst down entire teams. And especially if enemies don't have enough focus fire, burst damage, or CC, you're going to be able to sustain up so much if you hit multiple people with this because of the lifesteal. That's going to be impossible for them to shut you down, even if they do some fire onto you. And you're going to be able to kill one enemy after the next, and as more people die, the easier it is for you to finish them off, and the harder it is for them to actually focus fire you down. Now, realistically, there are only two ways to get consistent Death Blossoms off if you want to make sure that you don't die instantly and you get a decent amount of value. The first thing that you should do is track CC. If you can track a McCree's Flash, a Roadhog Hook, or just general CC like that, you're going to be able to actually use your ultimate when they don't have them. And if they don't have them, it's going to be really hard for them to focus you down and kill you. So that is pretty much the number one way to set these up. And I know that that takes some time, but realistically, you should be waiting. Be patient with your ultimate. You don't have to use it every time you get it if you can't set up for the perfect scenario to use your ultimate you don't have to force it because the thing is death blossom also makes you vulnerable to getting killed if you just try to force it out every single time a lot of times you're just gonna turn your ultimate into you dying anyways but if you just waited for the proper moment where you track the cc you knew that the enemy didn't have anything to stop you and then you ult it in that is the actual way to ensure that you do win team fights off of it and you don't just turn it into the enemy's opportunity to win the point or the team fight because you're just feeding it to the enemy. Now, the next thing you need to understand is that Death Blossom can animation cancel anything, and it's going to reload you as well, so it can be something that you lead into with all your other abilities. We talked about how you could bait people out with your Wraith, basically trying to bait them back and forth, and then coming out and trying to kill someone. If you can identify the target, let's say the target is the McCree. We keep using that example, because that's typically the one character that always wants to shut down a Reaper. Well, you can basically try to do all that stuff I said, where you really feast on that McCree. You go in, you do some damage, you wraith out, you bait him, you pretend you're leaving, then you come back, you kill that McCree, and the second he's dead, there's no more CC, right? So that that instant moment when enemies are trying to capitalize on you and you don't have your wraith, that is when you pop your ultimate. And then all these enemies are coming to focus you down, but they're going to die to your ultimate, and then when that's over, you're going to get your guns back and everything's going to be good. So essentially what I'm saying is you can use Death Blossom to continue your momentum from a previous play, especially if you shut down that CC, or if you just need to 
a little bit of damage to finish people off. Like, it doesn't matter if the Ana has Sleep Dar and the McCree has Stun and all these characters have, like, all these abilities to stop you. If they're at 30 HP and by the time they can even react, they're already dead, your Death Blossom. So that's a way to really use your Death Blossom and basically do a whole bunch of damage and kill them before they have any time to react. And moving on specifically about characters that can one-shot you, like Hansel and Widow, I would highly suggest spamming Crouch against these characters because you can Crouch in your ultimate. It makes it a lot harder for them to line up a shot, and I don't see Reapers do this at all, but it just makes you a lot harder to headshot up against those specific characters. So definitely keep that in mind against most characters. It doesn't really matter, but it pretty much costs you nothing to do this. So basically just spam it in general. And then, of course, you can always set up a Death Blossom by doing that high ground thing that I said before, where you go to a high ground and then you drop on behind an enemy as they're trying to retreat or back up or make a play. And that's an amazing way to get a whole bunch of kills on the enemy, especially when, like, some members of the team are pushing forward, but there are, like, three members staying in the back line. If you can drop behind them in ultimate, a lot of times, your time to kill is so fast that you're going to kill them before they have any time to react, and then it's going to end up in, like, multiple kills, and you just carried that team fight basically by yourself. Now, the most frustrating thing to deal with on Reaper is counters, and as you climb the ranked ladder, you're going to deal with more and more counters. So there are three big counters, in my personal opinion, to Reaper. There is Hanzo, in particular, who is just maybe one of the best counters to Reaper. There is D.Va who can consistently mess up your plays and then there's General CC across the board. CC is always a counter to a character that really wants to get in and always goes into the effective range of any single CC and if you get caught by a lot of those you're gonna end up dying most of the time. Now, when you're up against Hanzo, the most important thing that you can't do is jump because your headshot hitbox is so, so big. If you ever jump, you're basically going to just get annihilated by any decent Reaper. Now, you can jump last second if you're above 125 HP and you're jumping in to finish off a low HP Hanzo. A lot of times in the last moment, a Hanzo will set up a perfect headshot. So if you jump right before that happens and you just need a tiny window to finish him off, that is like the only time that you should be jumping against the Hanzo any other time. Please, please, please do not jump into a Hanzo. And then in general, do not push into a Sonic. If you ever get Sonic'd out, or if you know a Sonic is in any location, you have to reposition or retreat. Because if you were just hiding in a cub, you think you're safe and you get Sonic'd, you have to leave. You can't just assume, oh, I'm so far away from people, I'm safe. Because a Hanzo is going to wall climb and headshot you and look stylish while he's doing it. So please, please, please do not push into a Sonic. Run away if you ever get Sonic'd, and then you're basically not going to die like crazy to a Hanzo that is looking to flush you out. Now versus D.Va, D.Va, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta track her DM. It's just like with other CC, if you don't track her DM, you're basically gonna get shut down every single time you try to ultimate, and it's just gonna be awful for you. And most of the time, if she can DM your ultimate, you're not gonna be able to get the sustain from your lifesteal, of course, and you're just gonna get focused down by enemy fire. The next thing that you need to be doing is attacking enemies when either the D.Va is preoccupied or low on DM, or just feasting on D.Va herself, especially in a one v1 divas are going to be forced to reposition up against you because they can sure eat your shots but if they don't have anyone else to zone you away you can take her in a straight up 1v1 so she's going to have to leave and if she doesn't you're going to be able to easily kill her now the tips and tricks for general cc like we talked about before you have to be tracking them and you either have to bait them out yourself using your wraith basically doing a whole bunch of damage to them pressuring them and forcing them to use their cc or just listen hide in a little cubby or high ground wait for them to use those cc CCs on another target and then you go in after the fact now the important thing that you need to understand about enemies using CC in general is that the more pressure they're under the more likely they are to use their CC so if you're trying to bait out a CC it's a lot harder for a McCree to use a CC if he's like you know sitting pretty with his healer and you haven't done any damage to him but if he just took a shotgun to the face and he's still barely alive he basically understands I have to connect with my CC right this second or else I'm gonna die and in that moment that is when when you wraith it's really understanding where the enemy is coming from and the more pressure you put on them the more likely they are to use their cc or the more likely it is for you to force out their cc and if you understand that then you understand exactly how to play on that little edge of should i just two tap the enemy should i one tap wraith unwraith tap the enemy there are different ways you can play it but understanding this fundamental fact is one of the ways that you can really tap into the strength of reaper now last up we got to talk about reaper in the meta and the current predominant meta is of course monkey plus zarya now one of the reasons that reaper is so 
so good in this meta is Reaper is insanely good at punishing these two characters. He's really good at punishing a Winston, just getting all up in his face, and basically you do way more damage than he does. So basically you can sustain all the damage he does back to you, so you could just stand there on the front line and just be consistently going inside the monkey bubble, not letting him jiggle in and out of it and just feasting on them. And then of course, Azaria. If Azaria doesn't have her bubble, you can get all up in her face and basically destroy it easily. Like we talked about before, you can legit two-tap Azaria if she doesn't have her bubble. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, the reason that Reaper is also so good is you play really well into these two characters because when a monkey jumps in and he gets a Zarya bubble and he has his own bubble, he basically eats CC. He takes all the CC. And if you set up a flank at that exact same time or go in with your monkey, you're going to be able to basically just go in like crazy. And a lot of times these enemies aren't going to have CC. And even if they do, they're so overwhelmed that they're just going to crumble to your pressure. So that is what I would highly suggest you do. Just watch your movement of the monkey and either one, punish the enemy monkey or two, go in with your own monkey and just wreck havoc. And you're going to have a great time this meta on one of the most powerful characters in the game right now that is going to let you climb from any rank between bronze and grandmaster top 500. You can easily get there with Reaper right now. So I hope this video has helped you. If you have any questions about how to master Reaper, any tips and tricks or anything like that, definitely let us know in the comments down below. The GameLeap.com website is the best place if you want to master Reaper or any other character. We have in-depth grandmaster guides, tips and tricks, and much, much more. Do yourself a favor and go check it out in the links down below. But thanks so much for coming by. I'm Coach Mills, and of course, until next time.